one day old, full of fun and full of play. Alex is but one day old, but he was not born yesterday. There once was a little boy, born on July 30th, 1931, on Niagara Street, not very far from here. <coughs> Across the backyard was a city abattoir, steeped in the summer heat. Around the corner was a city incinerator, with a smokestack, spewing smoke and garbage into the air. A mean little street, a narrow little house. In the house was a woman about to give birth. It was six o'clock at night, very hot. She fed the children and chased them out of the house. Beg I did, beg I did. When her husband came home from work, she set them off to get the midwife. She held on to the kitchen table. And just as she would do in the old country, she crouched down. <laughs> and the little baby was born out of the domain floor. A boogity chip. When the midwife arrived, she took the kitchen knife from the table and cut the umbilical cord and tied it up. That is she that has lived before you. Who bit it, you? Little Buck. All boys and girls are, have the same name when they're born. Little Buck. Because we don't know if they will survive. One week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks. Time to call the coon, the godfather, to give it a name. A christening service of the church. Gospel di Pomilo, Gospel di Pomilo, Alexander. So naked, so vulnerable, so dependent. With such a great future and such a magnificent past. The Duke of Macedonia and help us. 
these words written by St. Paul in the New Testament, asking for help to set up one of the earliest Christian <coughs> communities in Philippi, the city named after King Philip. Macedonia and Macedonians are mentioned 27 times in the Bible. Oh, which grandfather? Which grandfather will tell him about King Constantine? who was born in Nice, very near present-day Skopje, King Constantine, the first Christian emperor, who established the city of Constantinople. Which grandfather will tell him about the two Macedonian brothers, St. Cyril and Methodi, who invented the Cyrillic alphabet to translate the New Testament, bring Christianity to Eastern Europe, on into the Ukraine, and on into Russia. And about the university that their people, St. Clement, built at Oakland. A thousand years ago, in the frescoes, painted in the monasteries and the churches, there was a Macedonian Renaissance that predated the Renaissance of Italy in the Western world, when a light to shine through in the darkness. Five hundred years of darkness. <coughs> His grandfathers and grandmothers could tell him how they survived for five hundred years <coughs> under the Ottoman Empire. Without books, without schools, without universities, without the chance to grow and develop. Learning from each other the only way they could, from colonel to colonel. Twenty-five generations. Survived and preserved our Macedonian heritage. Then, which grandfather will tell him about Eden in 1903, walking through the hills of Krishabal, and tell him about how the Macedonians rose with their declaration of independence, and how they were defeated and subjugated for another 10 years, 1912, 1918. The good neighbors, with the help of the Greek powers, <coughs> tearing Macedonia apart. When the silk can be baked over the fires of our own lives, they took it away to strange cities, and with their own knives they carved it up. Families destroyed, brothers set against brother. Names changed, our language forbidden. <coughs> People flee, hide, again hide, separate. But there's some unearthly magic, spiritual force, that breathes life in the Macedonia, reminding us who we are, that we're one people, one cloth, one order, wherever we are. His father and grandfather can tell him how a part of Macedonia emerged as a federated state in 1945, rising with new dignity, new schools, new books, new universities, revitalizing the culture, Rising like a small flame from those small, from those dark, burning embers. And how struggle for other native lands continued until 1948. Another defeat when the great exodus occurred. Children, boys and girls, torn from their mothers, forced to run with their lives. Hiding in Eastern Europe, in Poland, in Czechoslovakia, in Hungary, in Romania. The 30,000 refugees, the Begot Sea. Dispossessed and disenfranchised, but now grown up and educated, and some of them are with us here tonight. <coughs> Spreading the word like missionaries, telling our Macedonian story. Now, 1991, 8 million Macedonians telling our Macedonian story. Around the globe, like Alexander might have wished. Having learned new languages, new customs, new traditions. In Europe, in Yugoslavia, in Bulgaria, in Greece, in France, in Germany, in Denmark, in Australia, throughout the United States, in Canada, and here tonight in Toronto. And the little boy, he'll grow up, he'll learn. He'll learn that he was not born yesterday. He'll learn to be a Canadian. And he'll learn to say Nazdravye. And he'll learn to dance the oro. And the meaning of oro. That in times of crisis and joy, 
We cross the troubled waters like a great chain through time and space. Heal, Lord, Dadi Miraka. Give me your hand. Take my hand. Give, receive, share, join, oro, zaeno, and celebrate and live. And when people ask him who he is, he'll say, I'm a Canadian. And they'll say, yes, where did your people come from? He'll say, from Macedonia. And if they say, where's Macedonia? He'll say, Macedonia's in here. Thank <laughs> you.